What you just watched was me disassembling an old inkjet printer. I find these printers here and there on uh, websites similar to Craigslist. Craigslist. We have uh, Kijiji here in Canada. And a lot of people give them away for free because the ink cartridges, especially on a slightly older model, become more expensive than just getting a new model. So a lot of this stuff will often end up in the trash. I have a few. I've disassembled uh, two already. Um, I've got this one here and I've got another one to disassemble. But I just want to show you how it could be a good source for parts. Every printer I've ever disassembled has at least two motors in it. This one here, for example, I think I found three. Yeah, three motors. So we've got a, a few little DC motors, some of them with encoders. So if you're into Arduino, you get feedback out of these. And some of them come with pulleys that go onto belts. So it's a great place to find motors. Also, the print head assembly is sort of like a linear rail system. So I've decided to keep this one intact, but typically I would take it apart and take this little tooth belt out, these uh, pulleys and tensioners, and the motor, but I don't know. Maybe we'll see if we can keep this assembly in one piece and try to make some sort of drawing robot or something. Um, so I left the gantry all intact, but if I were to take it apart, then I would have the third motor here. Another great thing that you find in these printers are typically shafts. So there's one hardened shaft in this one, but I have actually removed some hardened shafts. I think I have about um, three or four of them per printer sometimes, so it depends on your model. They're, they seem to be replacing the hardened shafting with um, sort of like a plastic sort of guides as they become more and more a throwaway item. It's also a fantastic place to get these ferrite beads. So you also get a few metal components. So this one here is just a hollow metal tube with a uh, plastic on the outside and this is kind of like a gripping roller. So it's a little bit like sandpaper. I got a whole whack of gears and stuff so this would be for the belt and actually you could see this little belt here, this big gear, and this motor are a complement. They were together, so that's pretty neat. can gear up or down my projects. Um, I got a whole bunch of gears. I'm going to put all these gears together and use them in projects where I need gearing because the 3D printer does a lot really well, but it doesn't print these little tiny, tiny gears particularly well. So got a bunch in there. I always keep little springs and stuff around, so lots and lots of springs to tension. You get these nice um, flat flex cables too. You can solder onto them, the pitch is not unreasonable. And if you need to get wires, just like signal wires or whatever, through a really narrow space, these things are perfect for that. They could carry a little bit of current, but I, you know, I wouldn't go too high on them. We can test them, but yeah, I've got a few flexes here. And you don't even really need the connectors that are on the boards because you can just solder directly onto this side. Another cool thing is this LCD. Now, this LCD, I'll have to look it up and see if I can interface an Arduino with it. But typically, these LCDs, there's not too many manufacturers of them. So you'll actually sometimes be able to drive them quite like any other LCD, so that should be pretty neat. This is uh, definitely a dot matrix display. It doesn't seem super high resolution, but hey, not bad. Plus you got a whole bunch of switches here. I kept them intact, I kept them together because I'm not sure if the drive circuitry is underneath the LCD itself, and if so, then these buttons will actually be already interfaced to the inputs of the drive circuitry few more things, a few optical sensors here. So these are simply sensors that um, will output a signal when the beam here is broken. So you've got two of them here, so a single board, you get two of them, and there's the wires you can tap into. Over here, um, here's the input, so all the power supply stuff is separate, so I have the power brick somewhere else. Typically when 
you get given these things for free, people still give you the power supplies with it, so that's really useful. I have a USB socket here I could extract. There's not too much interesting here. I'll probably pull off the caps and pull off these inductors, and other than that, this board is kind of trash. This here, I believe, is Bluetooth, and depending on how it's connected, it may be usable, because it has a connector very similar to the ESP8266. So if it uses a protocol that's not too complex, maybe it would be usable. Who knows? But that one's that. It's either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Could be both. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, this board by itself, nothing too special. We have a Hmm, ST microcontroller. Don't really know the number on it. Nothing too special. Got a few of these ferrite beads that go around the flat flex cables. This is a motor mount. Another little optical sensor. This is the scanning unit. It actually scans your documents. But I'm not sure how good this thing is. I'm not sure how usable it is. I'll keep it aside because it does not take that much space. And finally, we've got a piece of glass. Now glass is really useful for certain things. Typically glass is super flat. It doesn't have very much variation in it. And therefore could be a great bed for a 3D printer. I'm not sure if you can cut these down to size because I think they may be tempered. I'm not 100% sure. If anyone knows how to figure out if these glass pieces are tempered or not, I feel like they are because I've read somewhere that if the sides look all melted, then they're tempered, and these kind of do. But let me know if you know a better way to identify these things without actually, you know, breaking them. Because you'll find out quickly if you try to smash this thing. But yeah. I just wanted to show you that free printers might be a good source of components for you. Back in the day, the older printers, you can actually find stepper motors in them. Today's throwaway printers, a lot less so. But if you have these DC motors equipped with an encoder, it's kind of the same thing. It takes a little bit more programming, but you can achieve similar results. So yeah, if you have any idea what kind of projects you'd like to see with some of these pieces, let me know in the comments below, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys didn't pass up on free printers in the trash or on your used sites because you didn't know that it had cool components inside. Thanks for watching.